Hey guys, welcome to the craft room, which is still a hot mess, but I'm slowly working on it. <laughs> I'm still a hot mess, but I'm slowly working on it. You're going to hear a lot of things going around because knocking over just Lulu. Okay, it's Lulu. But today we're in the craft room because guys, you have seen me, you know, asking you guys to come over to this channel. This is the soap channel, but there will be more than just soap. There will be a lot of crafting, um, not just soap. So um, I'm learning to crochet. I knew how to crochet, but I just know how to do just simple lines, just basic, just lines. And um, my mom and dad give me this beautiful, tilt you down, sewing machine many, many, a many, a many a year ago. And I actually need to clean her off. She's dirty, but... um. She has been sitting in the craft room since we moved in, which was five years ago. And I've used it to like him a pair of pants, um, take up like the side of my pants where I lost weight. And that's about all she's really been used for. So I wanted to, Lulu, come here and quit messing. She's just all over the place. So I wanted, there she is, what? <laughs> I wanted to get her out and actually make a quilt with her. I made an afghan and I've posted pictures of that on my on my regular Instagram and I might have on my soap Instagram. I have two Instagrams. I have my personal Instagram, which is me, Shannon Moody, and then I have the soap Instagram, which is Moody Girl Soaps. So I do happen to have a local quilt shop. It's not a big quilt shop, but it's a very small quilt shop, and she does have um quilting no um uh, you know, notions and fabric. She has a long arm quilt machine in there. She can quilt your quilts once you have them done. Um, just all kinds of little goodies in there. It's just a little bitty shop. It's located in Cages Mountain. But she had these. And these were what I was looking for. I saw this on a couple of different videos. But I will link the main one I saw, which was Missouri Star. And um, they're called something else because they sell their own. But these are uh, basically a nine inch paper pattern we'll go ahead and pull a couple out it's just a paper square now if you don't have these and if you want to take the time to take like old, old newspaper old uh, i've seen people say they used to use old telephone books um to cut out their squares um you can cut out and recycle the paper because this is just going to get torn off the back of the fabric so you need a sewing machine it doesn't have to be a special sewing machine just a sewing machine and i'm looking at mine what is going on here okay and it got a loop around it sewing machine you can hand sew it i guess if you have the time to hand sew i don't have the time to hand sew some really good scissors somebody's calling me and i don't know this number so we're going to decline it pardon because they're interrupting me. Um, you don't have to have the papers, but I'm going to show you what you do. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this because the tripod, the clip I was wanting to use is a piece of shite and it won't hold my phone and like stay clipped on to the surface. But what we're making are these little squares. And this is two squares sewed together. So here is your nine inch square cut and it's called a string quilt. And it's basically used to use up your scraps, which I don't have scraps, but locally my quilt shop sells scraps. They also sell fat quarters. They sell yardage. Um, and I was going and buying just scraps and I could buy scraps from anywhere from 25 cent up to a dollar something. And I could do the fat quarters for two fifty. And I also had um, a lovely lady um, from one of my Facebook groups, send me a bag full of scrap, and I've been utilizing that. And there's another lady from the group that's going to send me a little bit of her scrap. So it's going to have a really nice mishmash of fabric. And I'm going to show you what I've already done. And I had a spool of ribbon fall down because, guys, it is it's still a work in progress. Once I get done with this video, I want to get in here and clean some more. And in my dining room, too. Because as you can see, there's still boxes. Here's an old vacuum cleaner that I don't need anymore. Um, this shelf needs to be reorganized. And Miss Patricia up there is your 
Christmas ornament. I put it on a real pretty stand. It's going to sit on that stand is what it's going to do. I'll have to do a close-up picture of that. This coffee is really hot, but I really want it. This is my first cup of the day, and it's already after 1 o'clock, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is what we're going for is a full block. So that's what, what it looks like when you put four of your blocks together. And then you put those four blocks together and you start making rows. So this is four rows. I think this is my four row one. Yeah. And this is going to go across my bed. So I'm going to do four rows across, five rows down, I think is, is all I'm going to need with borders down the side. But isn't that pretty? And you just use all your different fabrics. Just, you know, if you have fem uh, family members, friends that sew, ask them for scraps. And you're going to need pieces that are like, you can cut into strips. I'll get into that in just a second. Here is the row I'm working on right now. This is only three patches, so I need, no wait, is that four? Do I have two four patches? I thought I had two three patches. This is also another row, look. So yeah. There is another row I'm working on, or is, this one's done. This row's done. And then when you get your rows complete, I thought it was another phone call. Then you sew your rows together. Was this three or four? I think it's only three, right? One, two, yeah, this was a three. My bad. So I need another patch for that, which is what we're working on. So I have two that I've already done. And in my machine here, now, now it's where I'm going to have to try to find a way to set you at a different angle so you guys can see. Um, let me figure that out, and then we'll come right back. Okay, I had to get out my other tripod thing, and it doesn't, like, bend or anything, so it's just, like, straight on. And so you're set up to see the sewing machine i wish i could like bring you up and angle you a little bit but this this one it doesn't it doesn't do that so i have a box of scraps here as you can see strips um some have been cut so need to be cut down smaller and then i have my paper triangles so what i do is i find two pieces that I know I want to be kind of focal point pieces and I'm really digging this so I know I want that piece and I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut it to the size of my paper so I don't have this big long tail because Lulu likes to come and play with those and then I'm going to need another long piece in the same color family and I try to find uh -huh. a piece that is solid like or more solid not quite so busy and I'm going to go ahead and cut that one as well just so it's kind of easier so what you want to do is find your two face up pieces make sure they're face up so this one's going to go facing you correct side up and then this one is going to go facing down, so right sides together, and there's stringies, but I trim those. Then you're going to take your paper piece and make sure it's covering the top corner. Now, some people use a glue stick to, to kind of hold this down in place. I just use my fingers, and I run it corner to corner, and you have to make sure it covers both corners, okay? So corner to corner. Sometimes I like to put them a little offside. So by that, I mean I'll scoot it kind of over offside, not completely center. But right now I'm just going to do a center. And I'm going to press, put this under my presser foot. And the whole time I'm holding it down, 
And I'm going to do my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to raise you up just a hair and see if you can see a little bit better. If I raise you up just a hair. I don't think you can, but... And... And then I'm going to hold these two tails together. If you drop your paper, no biggie. It just slides right back up in there. So I usually keep my fingers on it. Slide your point right back up underneath it. No biggie. Find my foot pedal. Lulu likes to get down here and play. I have my thread sit on three, which is in the middle. The closer your threads are together, together the easier it is to tear, supposedly. Um, I did find that to be true, but I don't like them too close together because if I make a mistake, then it's hard as heck to rip it apart with a seam ripper. So this is going to be kind of loud. I apologize. It is an older machine. And it helps if I turn it on. <laughs> Once I get to the edge of the paper, I'm going to back sew it just a little bit. Just so it holds on to that paper when I'm ripping the paper off the back. Once I have it connected to the paper, I grab my bottom corner and I level that up. Make sure my pieces are butted to the end here and they're even. And then you just sew a straight line. And my thread is called. There we go. And my foot is one fourth of an inch, so I just use the edge of my foot as my guide. And again, once I get down here to the bottom of the paper, the line of the paper, I'm gonna back sew just a hair and then pull it off, cut my tails. So, next, what I'm gonna do, so now you have two pieces sewed to your paper just like that and you're going to open it up like this and you're just going to finger press it you're going to lay it down flat and finger press it open and i just mean just take your fingers open it up and just press again so you don't have to pull it anything like that if i see any threads sticking up i pull them or trim them and just take your fingers and just kind of rub across so that's what we're going to do i'm going to lay it down flat here where i can do that a little easier on the table i'm actually going to come back with the scissors and cut a few of those stringy bits off the edge so now i need another piece of fabric so let's look in my box of goodies here and it doesn't have to always coordinate it can be something completely different the only all you're seeing is my arm the only thing is it has to fit the paper. So I know this would not, and I've been wanting to, this is the only piece of this fabric I have of this pattern. So I've been wanting to use that on a piece. I just haven't used it yet. So I need a long piece of something. Ooh, this butterfly is pretty. I don't know if that will fit, but to check if it'll fit, yes, it will fit. Hold it up to your paper, and as long as it comes over the edge here, and it comes over the edge here, it will fit. So now turn it so that the right sides are facing together, and the back side is facing you. Lay it down on top, just like we did the other one, and do it again. So I'm going to tuck my foot on there to hold it down while I line up my and this machine <coughs> pardon me dust this machine gives me a fit because if i don't leave enough tail hanging off when i trim it'll come and threaded so i just have to re-thread it real fast and that is nothing big Just getting her in the, the eye hole. Come on. It's in there. I just got to grab it. There we go. So 
Let me scoot that back just a hair again. Reach down in there and grab my bobbin thread. Backspace it a hair. We're getting down to the edge of the paper. Backspace a little or back sew. And I have run out of bobbin. Of course. I have run out of my bobbin. So after I just re-threaded, all you gotta do is unthread, take it around the top. Depends on your machine. It just takes just a second. But And that's all while we're doing that. Copy. And I know I'm going to run out of thread. I need to go get some thread. Yep, I'm running out of thread. But I have a full bobbin. And I have a little bit left on this spool, but not a lot. So, I mean, not a lot at all. But that's all you got to do to thread your bobbin. Now to re-thread the machine. Drop this feet down. And voila, she is threaded. So, let's go back to where we were. And I'm going to back it up. And I'm going to sew, and I'm going to, now I'm listening, because when you do a new bobbin, sometimes your tension is, like, really messed up. So, I'm listening to see if she's catching underneath. Right there where it ended, I'm going to back sew again. And, one of my tails is kind of, let's we'll snip that off. Just like so. Pull it out. Let me look at the back because that might be complete shite. That's the only thing I don't like about this machine. Just right there where it started over. If I don't leave a long enough tail and that wastes so much thread, it will come unsewed or unthreaded. That's the only thing. I do not like about this machine. This machine is like 20 something years old. Um, my parents gave it to me as a gift a long time ago. But there is our third row. And you just continue on doing this until you have a square. Um, let me grab this little piece of fabric here that's kind of cute and goes along with our theme. I think I only have a couple pieces this fabric as well. Go ahead and pull me a little bit down. I won't get this whole block done because I'm almost out of thread, but I will change over to some blue or something. There is of that row. It's really simple. So just quick, easy. You just pick a thread, one that kind of matches. This is a batik, so it doesn't matter if what side um, it's on the batiks. There's no right side. So I love using those, and she sent me quite a few of those. So let's put this one on. And, of course, you come and thread it. You little bugger. I cursed this machine all day for that. <laughs> I do, I do. I curse this machine all day for coming and dragging.
because I pull off a really long tail. Can you guys see that? And it'll still come and thread it. If I have a long tail here, I cut that off. And I just saw I did something. <laughs> I had two pieces of fabric. Did I not? I did. Alright, so here's what I'm talking about. Here's the seam ripper. I wanted to have enough in my threads that I could get a seam ripper in that. So I'm going to have to rip this apart now because I actually had two pieces of fabric in my fingers. And I just go on one side and take my seam ripper and I go along the paper so I'm not tearing the paper and I just start under those threads about every half an inch because before when I had it on like one I couldn't even get my seam ripper underneath it it was so hard if I made a mistake to get that seam open Once you get it open and you pop those seams like that, it just comes right off. That's why I do it on the back. And then the only place you really have a problem is where you back stitched to make it more secure. And that's exactly what it does is make it more secure. So then you got to kind of come up here and get that seam from up top. I had two pieces. I did not realize that. Look two pieces okay now no so that just wasted thread see i hate when i waste thread um because i'm wasting thread i don't want to waste anything let's try it again one more time Now we're good. All right. All right, I need this side's gonna go. This piece is going in this block, so I gotta keep my, my mind on using that. That would be a pretty piece to put on this side over here. So I keep my mind on that. Um, I like putting in pops of yellow. I might use that. I just need a little short piece. Here we go. Wrong side in. This is kind of a thicker piece. So we'll see how far that covers. Get the scissors out of my way. And you just keep moving until you cover the corner now if I have a teeny tiny little bit on the corner I don't worry about it and I those little bits I cut off I put in this little thing so if I need a little piece like here we go I've got it Still have a little thread on there so there is one side covered and i didn't use all that blue i still have a very small piece left and i'm going to cut it off and throw it in that little bucket but see now how all the edges are covered so now you're going to turn it to the other side and do the exact same thing so let's find something that goes but doesn't go i like kind of 
throwing some color in there once. Let's go with this beige. Making sure the right sides are together and the wrong side is facing me because on those light ones I get mi mixed up sometimes. continue on with this block and finish it and see how I have this long tail I'm going to come up here to where the paper ends and just cut that off since that's a longer piece I'm going to throw it back in my box and the square is growing and I'm just going to finger press that one out as well um this blue piece that I said will look good. Let's see if that'll fit in there. Just bare. No, it is a hair shy, so I can't use that piece yet. Um, what about this? It's a skinny, skinny piece, but it would get me over to where I could use that blue piece. So I'm going to use this piece, then the blue piece, and then maybe the yellow piece and then this piece so when i get the square done i'll be back and i'll show you what we do once the square is completely sewed together okay we're, we're doing coffee and i know the lighting in here is not great um but it works for sewing it doesn't work for filming but it works for sewing i nicked my hand with my rotary cutter so here is a a tip put your blades down when you're not using it <laughs> but we're getting ready to use it so so now what you need is a cutting mat i got mine at walmart i think it was around i don't remember it was under 20 i can't remember but it's just it's a 1 to 18 inch cutting mat by 12 inch and i'm gonna pin you down and you'll see it and you're also going to need a cutting straight edge again walmart i think this was 850 if you can find them cheaper find them cheaper um i did press this very lightly with a hot iron and a wool pressing mat i got mine on amazon for like 14 dollars. i can link that down below because i know a lot of people in my quilting groups that i'm on facebook are asking about the wool pressing mat saying they're so expensive and i'm like got mine on amazon for like 20 bucks under 20 bucks so this is what you now have is this block here's what the back looks like i gently pressed it um with an iron i'm gonna try to turn you down and let's see if i can get you or i can turn you down enough where you can see let me see what we're doing here okay I think so so this is the mat i was telling you about it's just a 18 by 12 mat you can get them a lot bigger trust me you're going to lay your block down you're going to take your straight edge and line it up with the paper which way can you see the best you're going to take your rotary cutter i'm actually going to scoot my sewing machine over just a hair going to line this up with right on the line of the paper and now my nose is going to run and you're going to take your blade right up against that ruler holding it firmly and if some of your threads catch just go back over and then there's your little tails and those go in the trash i'm gonna move my trash can because lulu was over there playing you're going to turn your block kind of get you where you can see it the best there's nowhere you can really see it the best. Let's see, I don't want to get you like too close to my iron. You know what I'm saying? You're like right beside my iron. My iron, you know you're North Carolina. If we say iron. See, I know I felt thread there catching. 
keep wanting to go on that side for my trash, but I moved it. And then you're just going to turn your block and continue to cut. The reason I liked this so much is you don't have to be precise with pretty much anything. Um, the only thing you have to be kind of precise with is when you're meeting up the corners when you're attaching the four blocks. This, your strings can be any width um, that you want them to be. As long as the length, you know, covers your square. And I was like, hey, that sounds perfect for me. I don't have to really be precise on measuring out squares. And you just sew them together. I can get some of my strings scattered up here. Get them off the table. So now what you're left with is a perfectly cut nine inch block. And what we're gonna do is we're going to tear the paper off the back. So I start at a corner and I fold it down. This is why I would backspace. I have seen when I was tearing this paper off, when I go to tear, the first few of my threads right here were coming unthreaded. And I was like, oh no, even though those threads are gonna get caught when you make your four patches, they're gonna get caught in the seam allowance and be okay. I just wanted to be sure they were down. So that's why I back up a hair when the needle gets to the paper. I do a little back stitch and go over. So now all we're doing is tearing the paper. I know this video is gonna be long, but guys, I wanted to show you what I've been doing. Um, I will make some more soap. I have got to go to Big Lots and buy some coconut oil, another southern term. Oh, here's that little teeny tiny string of pink we put in there. Let me get that off. This is the most tedious part, is pulling the paper off, I think. Especially on these little thin strings. Um, I try to keep my strings about one and three quarter inch to two inch. But some of these strings that were sent to me in the scrap that were real, real pretty that I wanted to use, I'm using, even though it's, it gives me just a teeny tiny. See how little that, that one is? But that's what makes it unique. They're not all supposed to be uniform. They're supposed to be scraps, scrappy. That's why this quilt was perfect. It was like, you don't really have to measure anything. Um... Lulu, will you quit messing? She's down here messing again. And here's the center one. And this is why they said to make your threads smaller because it perforates the paper more and makes it easier to tear. Um, yes, that is true, but like I said, if you make them too small and you make a mistake, <laughs> Then you can't get a seam ripper in there to like bust the seam. So once I get to that center one, I turn it because I'm right-handed and it's easier just to turn it and go back from this direction again. Guys, we are almost to December. Can you believe that we're almost to December? I think, what is today? Today is Monday. Is that correct? Yes, today's Monday. I went to church, evening church, which was just actually singing. They do singing. And we, were, my aunt and uncle went to visit a church they used to go to. And they'd ask my uncle to sing because he sings and um, he actually sings on one of our local um, channels on a few Saturday, one Saturday a month. Um, if you watch Hickory, the Hickory, North Carolina station, the good news um channel or program good news program on hickory my uncle dallas sings on there dallas harding so be sure you go and check that out they do have a youtube channel um i do not go to church regularly but i do go occasionally with my aunt and uncle and um he had us all in tears last night i was like kleenex i need kleenex 
Uh, he sang one of my favorite songs and dedicated it to me, and I'm going to cry. Lord have mercy. Um, as I've said, they're my they're my second mom and daddy, and it's, that is completely true when I say that. They're my second mom and daddy. All right, guys, so now we have this beautiful, beautiful block. And you know, like I said, I ironed it just very gently. Um, I just take the iron and just kind of pat it down, press my seams out the way they go. And I'm going to do that again. And let's see if I can turn you this way now. There we go. So here's that wool mat I was telling you about. I absolutely love it. It was, don't stretch your fabric. I just kind of sit it down and let it glide across very gently because you're pulling your fabric. So just very gently steam that down. I do have it on steam. And that's, that's it. See how nice and flat it looks now? So now we have another block and I need to make one more block. So I'm gonna make another block. We're gonna call this video done. Here, I'll turn you up so you can actually see me and can I turn you up? Oh Lord, I need to loosen up this tripod. So I'm going to make one more block and I will bring you back for part two, which we're going to make the four patch. So that'll be part two. So be sure you hit subscribe and I do have a declutter giveaway going on my other channel, which is Moody Girl Beauty. I will have that linked down below. Um, you do get an extra entry for following this channel, subscribing to this channel, for following it on Instagram. I'll leave everything down below and just follow the rules in that declutter video. It is a makeup skincare giveaway. There will be decluttered makeup skincare, which has only been used like once or twice. Um, and there'll be some new items in there as well. The powder products, I will sanitize with alcohol, but if there's brushes, anything like that, you guys need to wash those yourself. Um, just wash them in some baby shampoo and they're like new. So there's all that good stuff. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure you hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up and come along with me as I continue to clean up this mess. It's cotton. I mean, there, I did have boxes like up to here on this table. So it's, it's gotten down. I had boxes over here, like up. So it's gone, it's gone down. Uh, and this is a continuing process. So, um, and I can actually get to my sewing machine now, which I couldn't before. So stay tuned for part two. I'll see you guys on the next one.